Hello, this is part 42 of our comparative Bible study on the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry. During this part, we would like to wrap up our discussion on the Lord Jesus making 12 of his disciples apostles. Overall, this is our 82nd New Testament Bible study. So far, we've discussed 10 disciples that Jesus has made apostles. We are now on our last two. We would like to begin with another disciple named Simon who is not Simon Peter. It doesn't seem that this particular Simon is mentioned very much in the Bible. Even if this Simon is a brother of some of the other apostles and possibly a cousin of the Lord Jesus, as we mentioned in the last Bible study that this has been theorized, we still don't know very much specific information about him other than maybe these descriptors that are used with his name in these four lists. In the Gospel of Matthew it states, Simon the Canaanite. Likewise in the Gospel of Mark, and Simon the Canaanite. However, in the Gospel of Luke it states, and Simon called Zelotes. In the book of Acts, it states, and Simon Zelotes. So we basically have two main descriptors here, Zelotes and a Canaanite. Let's start with the descriptor of Zelotes. Looking at the underlying Greek word for Zelotes using Strong's Concordance, Strong's Greek Dictionary indicates that it means zealot, i.e., specially partisan for Jewish political independence. If that is correct, if this Zelotes label being put on this Simon's name is an indication that maybe he is someone seeking political independence for the Jewish people, maybe from Rome, I believe I've seen commentary indicating that this Simon Zelotes would have gone probably in a different direction from Matthew, who was a publican, who may have been viewed as a Roman sympathizer, a tax collector. So basically, they could have possibly had two very different perspectives. Those are some pretty interesting thoughts to think about. I'd like to pause here for a moment and talk about commentaries in general. It's important to keep track of what the actual scriptures say because that is authoritative and not to confuse what's in the commentaries with what's in the Bible. I personally haven't always used commentaries, but have found them to be helpful sometimes when you're stumped. Commentaries can be especially helpful if they have scripture references that you can look into to cross-reference and compare what you're studying. That is ideal because looking at scriptures, you're looking at what God has actually told us instead of somebody else's interpretation or opinion. Again, that's because we know that God's word is true. The scriptures, especially if we're able to look at the underlying Greek and Hebrew, can be trusted. On the other hand, commentaries, as well as other Bible resources, such as Bible dictionaries, or cyclopedias, they can vary from reference to reference. They can be right, they can be wrong, they can give us some neat things to think about or possibly even mislead us. So it's important to be mindful of this when we use commentaries so that maybe we're not stretching too far and getting too far from the scriptures. So if I mentioned that I saw something in a commentary, Please take that for what it's worth. It needs to be weighed with other things. Moving back to our current Bible study, looking also at this underlying Greek word translated as elotes here, it appears from Strong's Concordance that other related words are often translated in the scriptures as zeal, zealous, envy, indignation, jealousy, among other things. Many other Bible translations translate what is translated here as Simon Zelotes as simply Simon the Zealot, such as the New King James Version, the ESV, NIV, and New Living Translation. I've also seen it hypothesized that maybe this Simon 
was just a very zealous person for his faith, or something to that effect. Now let's move on to the descriptor Canaanite in Simon the Canaanite located in the Gospels of Mark and Matthew. This is a different underlying Greek word than that used in Luke as Zelotes. It's kind of confusing because it's spelled the same way as the inhabitants of the land when the children of Israel entered with Joshua and took the promised land from those early inhabitants for the children of Israel. I don't know why the King James Version chose to spell this word the way that it did. It actually confused me because I actually thought that maybe he was a Gentile because it's spelled just like the word that's used in the Old Testament. But most every resource that I've looked at has disagreed with that. I've even had to go back and fix a past Bible study because of this. But it appears that there is a different underlying Greek word for those early inhabitants. For example, in Matthew chapter 15, it speaks of a woman of Canaan, which would have been a Canaanite. And this root word is related to other words in Acts chapter 7 and Acts chapter 13. You can see here that it is a different word from this Canaanite used in Simon the Canaanite. I've seen it debated that maybe this Canaanite word here could be indicating that he was from Cana of Galilee. As a layperson, it does seem to me like these first letters match up. As you may recall, we've discussed Cana of Galilee a few times in previous Bible studies. As you recall, Jesus and his disciples were called to a marriage in Cana of Galilee where Jesus' mother was. Could it be that Jesus and his mother had relatives there in Cana of Galilee? Could someone use this as evidence to support the theory that was raised in the last Bible study that possibly this other Simon is a cousin of the Lord Jesus? We also discussed Cana of Galilee in John chapter 4 and that Nathaniel is from Cana of Galilee in previous Bible studies. These all use the same underlying Greek word. However, I have seen commentary indicating that, that this underlying Greek word here is actually maybe in reference to what appears to be a Hebrew word that also means jealous. So essentially this is saying the same thing as Simon the Zealot. In fact, some modern translations of the Bible, such as the ESV, NIV, and New Living Translation, translate this different Greek word in Mark chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 10 as Simon the Zealot. Okay, this brings us to the last apostle that we were going to discuss. All three Gospels similarly state, And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. It appears Iscariot may have to do something with where he was from. As noted in John Wesley's notes on the Bible, it could indicate a town in the tribe of Ephraim near the city of Samaria. Other commentaries have suggested other locations, such as in the region of Judea in southern Israel. Along those lines, I've seen the opinion expressed that he may have been the only one of the twelve apostles who was not from the region of Galilee. I've also seen it suggested that maybe Iscariot has something to do with a tanner's coat. In the Gospel of John, it's noted about four times that Judas Iscariot is the son of Simon. If this Judas is the only one of the twelve who's not from Galilee, then maybe this Simon is a different Simon. One option that we can often explore is whether or not there is more than one person with the same name. Let's stop here for now. During the last couple of Bible studies especially, I've shared a number of things that have come from select commentaries and Bible dictionaries. Please note the earlier discussion with respect to needing to be careful about applying certain references. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future. If I got to share anything good, it's a blessing from God. Thank you. Goodbye.